Chat na. So I think I enjoyed watching the show. Um, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, lo chisa ba ba ngan be to be Facebook. Seto was angapo. So go catch ana bad. Yeah, I hope we have a beautiful show today. I know there's um, we always battle with, in, with internet and connection, but so I hope we'll do it as fast as possible. Seto was a man. Hey, imo ye pass. Imo ye pass it. Ogun zagala go sela Africa. Mg. Bafana bafana. COVID-19. Ndabagatan, ndabagatan. Join us next time. I'm going to tell African as you can. Ask an engineer that you're bafana bafana. Kwen zagala hangi bafana bafana. Yes, I know. I'm going to see you now. I'm going to see you now. I'm going to see you now. Obviously, after finding out Uguti, the result between Sudan and South Africa, you know, a favor to Sudan at 2-0. Uh, something of which as long as he in the cool and jenga masel africa uh could not tell la poguti the seller said to the ganga no disqualify nanyana star no guti a gula mama teams a bigger corner copini uh south home sudan kana a best number two man in cool uh with this in a pumelela uh it's come as travel a little about a kana jale sudan Ushe ushe ilele puzu bese le sinalo bese ne puzu lot we fell so secure but all we did I mean we lost that the single point actually if the game was ended nil nil for example we did we didn't even need to score we just needed to secure a clean sheet and then we we came back uh, we came back with the qualification but uh, unfortunately kenge um, kubenjalo and I think uh, the biggest problem I think it started when uh SAPC couldn't secure the rights um uh, to view the, the game so i'm a sort of solar africa king as one who born and we say um how was the game even if some of us we try to watch it on on the internet you know watching clips and using our friends you know and the connections and all that it was not an easy watch um but at least i mean the good is landel the good is born with you how was the approach from the from the coach Hey, umra rogu fiska, umra rosu vega kukoish no maso vega bazaar. Yeah, look, I think uh, it's difficult to put the blame to the players. A national team coach doesn't inherit players. Mara figa la pe streaming. So it's a chava, you know. It's where he has a free role to to select every best player everywhere, playing everywhere in the world, as long as uh, players are eligible to play for the national team. 
So it's very difficult to put it to the players. So this one, it's unlike the the, the club coaches, you know, where they join a club with um, some they inherit uh, contracts that are undoable, you know, and they have to work with what they have. As a national team, is completely different. You know, it's a position for someone who's extremely experienced, someone who has the know-how, how to win. You know, um, who knows who's got the drive, who knows exactly uh, which direction he should take in order for the national team to win. So, um, look, I think uh, also we can't blame the coach alone. I, I think the federation has to take um, a slack for this as well because. Um, I mean, I think by appointing Muli Fentegi as a national team coach, we set ourselves for failure from the beginning because he himself has never had, he's never achieved anything um, at the national level. Um, he was coaching with a junior, you know, the junior 12 and under 15. I mean, that's a very low le- level um, of coaching. It's not even at the, a good level to coach for a TSTV Premiership club if you only have that experience. But I think um, there were a number of challenges they were facing at the time. It was um, after the Afcon uh, Egypt, um, where we went out of uh, in the semi-finals. Um, I think that uh, Safa wanted to appoint um, Javier Reynard, who was at the time uh, he coached uh, Senegal at the time, and he, we know he coached Ivory Coast. He led them to win, and he also coached Cameroon. I mean, um, I think he coached uh, Morocco. Uh, so he's a well, uh, he's a well-known coach, and he's, he's successful at African football. But I think because of money, Safa couldn't secure him. There were a number of options that were available then. Uh, Gavin Hunt was available. Ben McCarthy was available. A lot of people were talking about him. Um, yeah, some people even uh, right now people are talking about uh, how about Dr. Kumaro coming and Dr. Kumaro partnered with. Uh, uh, um, uh, Moloi, you know, um, at Bafana Bafana level. So people are bringing up all these sorts of suggestions. At the time, it was like that as well. But, uh, Pito Musimane was another option at the time, but himself, he declared himself unavailable because he was contracted with Sundowns and he did make his visions clear. He wants, to win, um, he wants to win another star for Sundowns and he wants to go play at the Club World Cup. That was his vision. And simply leaving that contract in the middle wasn't part of his um, wasn't part of his goal. So I think uh, 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 Safa, the federations, has to take a slack because it was firstly an, a, a highly irresponsible decision to employ Mulifin Um But having given him a chance uh, himself, he failed himself. You know, because uh, first he, he appoints as his technical team uh, Arthur Zwane you know, as an assistant coach. If you look at Arthur Zwane's accolades himself, he's never won anything as a coach. Um, if you think of the multi-choice disc challenge, he's been the coach there, but he's never won that that, that small uh, reserve league, you know. Um, uh, Celtics has won it, Golden Arrows has won it, Sundance has won it. You know, uh, some of those coaches maybe could have said, okay, because of how they, they've done their business, they've gone about their business winning that small league, Maybe they deserve to come and help, but you ask yourself, why would Molly Sintegi ignore uh, the under-23 coach, you know, David Natuani, who was doing well with, with, with Sundowns? Why would he ignore someone like that? Why would he ignore someone like Dylan Shepard, you know, Sheppy, someone who was doing well at the under-17 for vets, who's, who, people who have a winning mentality, who knows how to do it, and people who have actually played at the highest level. If you remember, Arthur Zwane never played in overseas, even if he played well for Chiefs. But he never played overseas, so which why, which which is why we think that if you have someone, even if you don't have a good experience as a coach, but if you've played at the highest level, uh, you've worked with the best coaches with the back tactics, then that sets you up for, you know, for 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 a good platform that maybe you can work for the national team. That's why I personally think that if you have someone like Lucas Khatebe or you have someone like Sean Bartlett or Someone like uh, 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 Darren Barkley, Bradley Cannell. He's a coach. He's a coach in. Uh, he's a coach in uh, in Germany right now. Bradley Cannell. Even at the time, he was already a coach. He's won the the, the varsity cup with the UJ before. So those kind of people, they've got the accolades. They've got the qualification. I mean, Benny McCarthy. He's got the highest qualification um, uh, in the country uh, with the highest achievement. You know, no one has achieved more than him, both as a player and a coach. So I think. Molefin Tegi, we won't blame him a lot because he wasn't, he didn't choose himself to the position. 
But uh, ha- having been given a chance, I think I don't think he's taken enough ammunition to to, to get um, uh, enough assistance you know, to win or to to actually be successful at the national team. Puma, we bafana bafana. We Africa kanga kanga. We say Africa. Kulu kulu police say Africa. Yeah, I mean uh, it's, it's it's a big one. I mean not to qualify for the African Cup of Nations, um, it's a big thing because it means that uh, first of all you lose competitive games, you know, and we know if you don't play competitive games, it means that the national team will have to play friendly games. Friendly games are not rated similarly to com- to qualifiers and the actual competition in terms of the FIFA rankings. So in other words, when you play those type of games, even if you can win five or 10 in a row, it will take you a longer time to make it into a, a top 10 in Africa, which means that even if you can win 10 matches in a row now, because the Afghan will play and South Africa will not be there, automatically we will not make it into the top 10 of the uh, Afghan, uh, actually in top 10 of uh, Africa. So if we are not in top 10 in Africa, it automatically means that we are outside top 50 in the FIFA rankings, in the world FIFA rankings. And that makes it very difficult to operate in the country. It makes it very difficult for the players to get caught. Yeah, so, I so think so, I lost you for a while. I don't know if you yeah. can see me now. Yeah, we are. Um, so, so, I think so, your now. network is coming back. <laughs> yeah, so, can so, you so, hear now. me at all? Yeah, yeah, go to the cool. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, so as, as I was alluding to, I mean, not, not playing competitive matches, it means that um, players will struggle in the next two years, players will struggle to secure contracts going overseas, which is something that we wanted to improve on, you know, before the World Cup 2022 came about. You understand? Um, I actually thought that um, by not qualifying at the AFCON, we will actually automatically lose the qualification for the World Cup. But uh, this morning, I was just checking again, and it's not the case. We actually are ranked in a group uh, qualifier for the World Cup Qatar with Ghana, Zimbabwe, and um, uh, I think uh, I think there's one smaller team that we really rank with. So we, it seems we still do have a chance to qualify for the World Cup, you know, uh, even if we didn't qualify for the African Cup of Nations because I was checking that group this morning. So at least we still have a chance. But what it means is that we can't continue with the with a technical team that we have. We can't continue with the way things have been going. Yes, there's COVID, there's everything, but COVID has also affected uh, Sudan. It's also affected Ghana. Hey, so we can't cut uh, right out. Yeah. Mm. So, when you talk about the groups, you can talk about the Afghan I'm a top two, I qualify. I'm a top two. That the thing with the Amat test number three is, and I'm a point of money that man no other than those teams. I think it can be singing and get to buy the money because we got many points as number three. Can you qualify the new system? I got this over again. Um, well, in this in this round, you know, in the previous round, it did work for the Egypt World Cup, but this time around, it doesn't work because there's 24 teams that must go to the African Cup of Nations, and they only take uh, two from the group. So at the, in this time around, unfortunately, it works against us, and that thing won't work. Actually, I was having a conversation with Tabi Musia this morning from SAFM, and we were talking about the limitations, you know, and really, you could see that there's no other chance that we can qualify for the AFCON. I think South Africans need to embrace themselves and accept it and deal with the way going forward, because it will be really bad if we don't qualify for the for World Cup Qatar. It's the main one, but... African Cup of Nations was almost like a, like a training camp to go to the World Cup, you know, to test yourself, to check up your team, you know, to check how, how far you are from the continent. And obviously, once you improve that, and you must also remember that uh, gaining competitive football and also being within the top 50 in the world um, makes it possible for the nation to acquire friendly, friendly games with uh, the top 50 nations. So in other words, we could acquire friendly games with England, with Belgium, with Germany, if we're in the top 50, because then that prepares you for the World Cup. So now it means we will go another two years without being able to play friendly matches with such countries. So that sets us very, very back, you know, and it's going to uh, take us a long shot. But I think what should happen now, uh, Safa should sit down quickly and look at the possible options 
and see what needs to happen. But what it, what it means is that this current technical team simply cannot can continue. Ogopshong Ogoti is all Africa's number facilities. Nakoroke, world class stadiums. Eh, mocheka i lak train lak onama tags i tags. Best post eh, equipment, post post ground, best everything. So anga has a shot anga in South Africa to produce those quality players for our national team. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a fair comment. I mean, you re, you're referring to the high performance center in Pretoria, yeah, and also center, yes. remember we also have a Royal Bafu King um, in 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 Rustenburg. That's one of the best um, mm. training uh, training equipment and training. Natural Natural is one. Hey. Well, so I mean, you've got a number of. Uh, it's not about the, the resources. The case of South Africa and Bafana Bafana is not about the resources. It's about greed. I think it's about greed. There's certain people who are holding on to important positions and they sacrifice the country. And this happens at SAFA. Because I'm telling you, if you go and sit down with Benny McCarthy and say, we want to make you the national team coach, he will run for that. And it will not be about money. He will run for that. You know, if you go and sit down and speak to Gavin Hunt and talk to him about the national team uh, co- a job, he will run for that. There are a number of great South African coaches who can, and even Sean Bartlett, you understand? And I gave you a nice example with Bradley Cannell, someone who's already won as a coach and someone who's played at the highest level as well as a player. So those are the type of people that are needed at the national team. It's not about the facilities. If you look at um, the reason why we didn't qualify this time around, I mean, you start with uh, uh, you start with the first game when we played against Ghana. Um, for me personally, I think I got a shocking starting lineup and uh, the system. I think you and I we had a chat about what was going to be the possible starting lineup or the shape, and I gave you something like a four-two-three-one. Um, or a 4 3 3, you know, I gave you something like that because I, when I look at the players, they will shade for that. The coach went with a 3 uh, three four three. 3. Um, for me, which is it's like I always say this, that the 3 4 3, it's a very complicated uh, system to play. Even best coaches in the world, I mean, you can check Pep Guardiola started with it in the league this year. It didn't work for him. He had to change and go to a back four. Now he starts to win. You can see uh, Jose Mourinho was playing that at Tottenham, and things were not going well. Michael Olivi sits down with him, then he changed the formation to 4-3-3, sometimes to 4-2-4. He starts to win. So the 3-4-3 uh, uh, system, it's a very complicated system. It needs special players, especially those who are known as wingbacks, because it's a system that it's in between attack and defense. You're never really clear, are you defending or are you attacking? So what it does is, it forces the coach to put more defenders in the field. And defenders, you put them in not in defensive position. You put them in offensive position in the midfield. In other words, if you play 3-4-3, three, three, you're going to have three defenders at the back. And then in the middle, you're going to have another four defenders. Because in the middle, in the center of the middle, you're having two defensive midfielders. You're having Ben Mutsuare, and then you're having a, 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 a Rivaldo Coutier who are two defensive midfielders. On the side of them, on the right-hand side, you are having uh, uh, Tapelo Moren, who's another defender. On the left-hand side, you're having uh, Santi, who's another defender. So in, in essence, it means that you're having seven defenders and only three are taking players, which is the front three. So it sets you up uh, for defense. And actually, if you are under attack, also you are not stable at the back because there needs to be a synergy and good communication between the two wingbacks. That system relies on the wingbacks. When one goes forward, the, the other one uh, remains back and gives cover to the, to the back three. So you need wingbacks that can create first assist and can be able to score. And in our cases, we've seen Tapelo Moran is not able to score. Uh, Santi is not able to score. I mean, both they've, they've had brilliant opportunities. Uh, Santi had a beautiful shot and goal and he didn't hit target. He hit it straight to the goalkeeper and made it possible for the goalkeeper to, to have a feast on it. And if he had it slightly on the side, on any of the side, with the power, with the weight of that shot, that goal could have won 20. In the case of, of uh, Tapelo Morena, twice in the box, twice facing the goalkeeper, but lacks composure. So you ask yourself, 
can he be the best wing back? Is he a right back or is he a wing back? You know. So as a coach, I think then um, at that stage, I think he'll he'll come back and say, Capello Moran is not a good wing back. Sant is not a good wing back. Let me go back to a four because now I need to secure a point. That was the main. You know, if he went in there with a four five one. That was going to be a beautiful system because it means he's only playing on transition. He doesn't need to win with two goals or an avalanche, but he needs to secure a win. Or he needs to secure um, a clean sheet. That would have got us through. But he doesn't have that experience. You know? Also, when you look at the situation where the first uh, uh, national team call-up, I think it was a great, uh, 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 I think it was a great squad, in my opinion. The players that were there gave him enough opportunity to go win both games, even the Ghana and, and, and the Sudan match. But as soon as the uh, COVID regulations start affecting some of the players to come in, when he replace, when he makes his replacement, now you start doubting his homework, if he's done his homework, if he's watching enough games, because he substitutes uh, Dean Firm and, and he puts in uh, Mutobin Vala. You know, you ask yourself, what on earth can uh, accredit Mutobin Vala to come through and replace Dean Firm and someone who's got so many caps at the national team, someone who's playing in England. You understand? And yet you have Tato Mukeke, yet you have Mteto from uh, uh, Swallows. So you've got a number of great, yes, you've got a number of great uh, box-to-box players. And, oh, you also, you also have uh, Mukwena, Tebu Mukwena from Supersport. Even if he wasn't fully fit, you could have mm-hmm. given gave him a chance then. You understand? So he come and calls Mutobin Vala. Yesterday, when we look at the, the, the starting lineup, he went again for a 3-4-3, a very confused system. You're not sure if you're attacking. You're not sure if you're defending. At the back, part of his three, he has uh, Sianda Tulu. Instead, of, he plays Sianda Tulu on the left center back on the first game instead of having Musa Libuse, someone who is a naturally mm. left-footed to play in that position. And if you look at competition-wise, Musa Libuse is playing in a defense that has never lost a single match, both in all competition for Sundowns. And right now, uh, when you look at uh, Sianda Tulu, he's playing for Hapul Tel Aviv in Israel, a very low league in Europe. And also Hapul Tel Aviv, it's a league that comprises of 14 teams, and Hapul Tel Aviv is sitting number 11. Uh, Sianda Tulu has played all games, you know, over 25 games, and they've considered over 28 goals. What does that tell you? You know, so you have to look at that. I mean, why would you have Sianda Tulu uh, 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 favor him more than Musa Libuse when you look at the statistics and when you look at the league level, when you, look at, when you consider the fact that Musa Libuse plays for the African Champions League? You know, so I think when you look at some of those things, you can see that Mulif Ntegi was never going to get it right, even if he did qualify. You know, he's, he's far off from understanding what's required at the national team, also understanding the players that are there. I mean, you and I, we were also talking about the, the position of the left back, actually both full backs, because we started talking about the right back where Tapole Moreno was, and I said it to you that he's setting us for a failure there on the right-hand side because Tapole Moreno is the only one. And in my opinion, he's not the best right back we have. I mean, you have him Kiza from Cape Town, who's playing well, and then you, you also have um, Vio Mere, who still have a very good endurance, you know, because those are the players that are doing well right now, that you can choose them based on their performance. Tapelo Moreno is not a wing back, first of all, and he's, and, and he's not a good wing back. Uh, Pito Musimane tried him at Sundowns, and it never worked out. So if Mulif Ntegi was watching all that development, you could see that if I'm going to have Tapelo Moreno, I'm going to have him as a full back. Because when you have him as a full back, it means you have the back four, and when he decides to go forward, then you're going to have one of the central midfielders covering up on the, on the right-hand side. So I think that's, that's where you get the balance when you have the back four. But when you don't have him uh, working efficiently going forward, then you ask yourself, why should you have him in the field? You know, so I think those are the type of decisions that um, we have to deal with. Yeah, no, look, um, I know some of the incidences at the club level, né? Um, because it's, at club level, it's, that thing is very easy to happen because 
players are contracted and uh, the coaches contracted um and mm-hmm. also uh coaches move around they build a relationship with certain player managers and agents um i have heard of certain stories but at the national team especially with the uh, malaysian teki and his lack of popularity i don't know i really don't know i did hear that but i can't say anything about it i don't know anything about it if it if it really is um uh, it was the case you know and even if it was the case i wouldn't really understand which type of players were influenced you know to play there you know because some of the agents that i know i know they're quite reputable and i don't think so i don't know you know let me say i don't know about it okay coming to uh, isafa njenga nje bobana apha kusafa ifu mhlambe unelwazi apha kusafa abaphepheko and yeah kuko sidlalele njenge safa ukuthi ipete bobana nje i management ekusafa yoke nje Yeah well I think um Safa is a, it's a federation of the football association in South Africa and they are responsible for a number of duties uh of which some of them is to manage the, the league the South African league and also to mediate between um uh disputes uh, between players and clubs and the national team uh, so they do a number of uh, uh, a big job their job is not only to manage Bafana Bafana but at the top you have the president uh, Danny Jordan um who has been the president now for the second term uh and then uh, you have at the technical team lastly we had Neil Tovey forming part of the technical uh, uh chairman of the SAFA but i know because he's been having a number of um uh cardiac uh, cardiac uh, disease that he's been yeah. struggling with so i don't know if he has a, a replacement but i know really dwabo works w- in that office as well uh also really dwabo is the president of the women's football who's who's heading the um the uh, south african uh, uh football uh, women's football league and also at the national team um then you have mulifen teki then you have the technical staff you know that consists of asazwane and the assistant coach from super sport uh, uh i think it's uh, what's his name i think it's kumalo Yeah so I think um, that's part of the technical team yeah 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 bafana bafana as thin as it is um at safa level there are CEOs um who also not really forming part of bafana bafana but they're part of administration in terms of the traveling arrangements you know they're the ones that um, request friendly matches they're the ones that mediate between uh, conflicts between PS um PS TV premiership and FIFA they're the ones that are responsible for the training of of referees so it's a bigger organization that comprises of a number of people uh of which myself personally a culture you know feeling you would um i don't think it's a well led uh, organization and i think uh, Danny Jordan as a president uh, i think he's done very well we need to give him the accolades for bringing us the world cup 2010 but i think in terms of leading the troops um and making us one of the the, the formidable side in africa again he's not winning in that uh, in that vision so that tiwa kufuneka ma changes ku safa eh afunika ku kufane kwenziweni kuhle ukuthi na tiwa eh eh ukubena ma changes ku safa yeah look i think as difficult as it is um ichukuluka ukukhulu efuneka ku safa i think is a technical team iba fana bafana when i look at it because changing the president you just changing the vision and the culture the attitude you know the spirit of the leader you know because that's what the leader does um but i think that uh, i've listened to a number of uh, interviews for from Danny Jordan uh, some of them he was doing them at CAF level some of them he was doing uh, with the FIFA organizing committee some of them now as a president and even when uh, um um the previous uh, uh, safa president was there uh nema tandane uh, um, i think i was listening to to tenacho done a lot and i think he's someone who really loves the the the, the football game he's someone who's really passionate even if he's a predominantly polit- a political person but i think he's someone who really loves the game he's someone who wants south africa to, to to succeed what he doesn't have is the technical skills to take the national team forward so he needs people like dr kumalo i mean not dr kumalo but uh, lucas khatebe people like mark fish people who played at the highest level you know people who have played internationally and work with the best coaches in the world i can't ignore 
uh, the fact that Danny McCarthy is available in the country and available to work for us. And I And even experience-wise, Lucas Khatev, in my opinion, I think he's got it uh, more in the locker. And even his networks, he's got more networks than Neil Tovey because simply because of the space that he was occupying internationally. So I think that the technical team of Bafana Bafana, that, that's where the, the, tech, the changes need to happen. Because I don't think that we fail qualifying for AFCON because the team is not good enough. That team was good enough. It's just that the personnel employed there are not good enough at that level. You know, they're not good enough to set up a good starting lineup, to do a good match analysis of the opponents. Because if he does that, if he does a very, if Melissa Ntegi does, him and his technical staff, because remember, he doesn't work alone. Him and his technical staff, if they do a good um, uh, job analysis uh, for, for the opponents, they would have understood the strengths and weaknesses of Sudan and understand how did Sudan beat Sao Tome 3 nil? You know, they needed to understand that, what were the strengths of that team. And if you look at it, if you look at some of the clips from yesterday, uh, Sudan could have uh, almost beat us 3 nil as well. Mm -hmm. So you can see that almost a similar strategy they used against uh, Sao Tome, they used against us. So what does that tell you? It tells you that we didn't do enough uh, homework of uh, uh, Sudan. We, we didn't do uh, team analysis very well. And actually, if you look at uh, our starting lineup, it was almost a carbon copy of the match we played with Ghana, where we battled to go forward. And also, the worst part of it is that uh, Mabu was playing as a left wing back this time around because uh, Mayela was, was forming uh, part of their uh, back three. So you're starting that game, you're playing players off positions. Zwan is playing on the uh, a left a winger striker where he normally doesn't play. He, what, what we know, he'll normally play behind the striker or he'll play on the right-hand side of the field where Pesitao was. So, I mean, there's just so many, many errors there. Badio Kudier start at the bench. Uh, Monare, uh, Monare and Motsuare, they start, they start ahead of uh, uh, Rivaldo Kudier, who, in my opinion, has been doing very well for Sundowns in that position. So, I mean, you, you look at situations like that and you ask yourself what more needs to happen. Obviously, the technical staff needs to reshuffle. Eh, when I manage my ticket, I can go. I'm going to find the or after u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u u to help a national coach who cater to my players. And as we got in the lock. Mr. Senam, bye-bye. Mshalwa? Yeah, Mshalwa, I'm going to go to the lady. Hi, the lady. I have a little trouble in Shalwa Rawaish mara si si ingali linda bete namchanje. Wana mchanje. Kuchere si ingali le. 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 I thought I was a
ten ten to 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 the According to the statistics in the Thank you.